Whoa, what is going on, guys? Corners and Kumanji back with yet again, but for a very long time, been absent. Movie review. So, how are you guys doing? Good So, today we are here to review the very new, the very best, finally, a movie that we can all be proud of and not have to go through a horrible phase four round like we did before with the Marvel Universe and come back home smiling and knowing that we're going to go back and see it again and again and again. And that's exactly what I did. I've already seen this movie twice. That's right. We're here to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine. So this is the non-spoiler version. So you are safe for people who don't want to be spoiled and haven't seen the movie yet. I will be making a spoiler full video of this whole thing because I feel that, you know, there's time for that anytime. So, you know, and plus a bunch of people who review these type of things tend to have a spoiler free version, a spoiler version. So we're going to keep that trend going. So let's go ahead and get right into it with the non-spoiler version review of Deadpool and Wolverine. So, right off the bat, with the film all together, let's just talk about the more basic stuff that we already know. We have Hugh Jackman returning with the glorious claws of Wolverine, and Ryan Reynolds once again playing the Merc with the Mouth Deadpool. And I could not be happier to see these two together, finally, after many, many years later, with the fact of the last time we've seen these two together was the unfortunate uh, misfire of X-Men Origins Wolverine. Where we got the version of Deadpool, which in my in my opinion is not Deadpool. I call him Weapon Eleven because that's exactly what he is. Um, and the horrible execution of how Deadpool was perceived in that movie was just god awful. And I hope we never have to see it again. But however, I'm still very appreciative of the fact that without that movie's existence, without that version of Deadpool's existence, we would not have what we have today, which is the actual comic accurate version of the Merc with a Mouth. Ever since that moment of betrayal by the Marvel Studios and Fox, 20th Century Fox, um, we've been very skeptical of believing that there could ever be a better X-Men movie after that. So then we were very caught off guard with one day we got test footage of Ryan Reynolds voicing a CGI purely animated version of Deadpool. Hola! Me llamo Pecina de la Muerta. There's no easy way to say this. I'm pregnant, Trevor. Killing a bunch of bad guys on the highway, which we already know that scene from the get-go is him waiting to do a contract on the side of a highway bridge and then jumping into an SUV or whatever type of car that was of a bunch of bad guys and killing them in close quarters. So, eventually, fandom went crazy. We all wanted to see the legit thing. And after a while, we finally got it. Maybe about <laughs> 10 years, maybe 5, 6 years later. Eventually, we got what we wanted. First version of Deadpool, Deadpool 1. Amazing film, though it did leave us open with wanting more, and that's exactly what we got with the amazing version of Deadpool 2, in which case came in not just one, not two, but three versions. We had the theoretical cut, which was still rated R, still had the amazing gore and Merc with the Mouth innuendos and jokes and whatnot, but also had the super duper cut. Uh, which had extended scenes that were never made it into the film and got put into its own version of the movie where the soundtrack was different, didn't have the best choices in songs for the said soundtrack, so on and so forth. So, as it went on, we found out that they needed more, they wanted to milk more money out of the Deadpool cap. So what did they do? They made a PG-13 version as a joke towards the situation that happened many years ago when Deadpool was first announced to have its first movie with a woman who was trying to get it canceled because her son wanted to see the film but couldn't because it was rated R. And she, like every other Karen out there does, wants to get it canceled and started a petition to do so and it flopped. Everybody do the flop! So because of the fact that they were just making a joke into that reference of that situation, it was also just a cash grab that they wanted to do. On top of that, they also wanted to prove that Deadpool could be PG-13 if they wanted to. Unfortunately, this horrible excuse of a cash grab met its end with a huge flop. Up. Not a lot of people came to theater to see it. None of the people really cared for it to be a thing, considering we had, I don't remember his name, uh, psh, uh, the name will come back. I'm sure I'll put it in the subtitle somewhere on the screen. Anyway, so we got a, a specific character that was in the Princess Diaries movies, and he's tied up in the bed with Deadpool reading him the book which is technically the PG-13 version of the Deadpool 2 movie, um, in which case they keep coming cuts back to those two having interactions and stuff like that, and explaining the book, and then in which case there's scenes from the movie that get completely cut out for their scenes, and new scenes get put into the uh, montage, the death montage of Deadpool trying to commit suicide, so he can be with his beloved um, Vanessa 
uh, as we go forward into the movie, we start bringing ourselves more familiar ground with Cable joining the mix. As I haven't, if I haven't said it before, Cable did join the, the scoop of the whole thing of Deadpool 2, along with Russell, who is going off of Fire Fist. And, of course, the character we never thought possible, the Juggernaut, being in a much more CGI version than we got in the X-Men Last Stand movie. So as I so as I sit here and done talking about the first two movies, we're now here to talk about the third movie, as we start off into the movie with an amazing intro. Not gonna explain what it is. It's all over TikTok. If you haven't found out what it is by now, then unfortunately I can't help you with that. Go see the movie. Uh, as we go forward into the the aspect of the TVA joining into the mix, uh, more references towards the Disney Plus series Loki. Um, uh, old characters from the old movies returning, such as Colossus, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Yukio, Peter, uh, Buck, Dope Hinder, uh, Blind Al, and of course Vanessa. Many jokes towards Disney and Fox altogether through the entire film. Uh, amazing soundtrack. I actually managed to make it much more better than the last movie. Um, but not to mention, the cinematography of the entire film was just blown away. I could not have been much more happy with what I was seeing cinematography-wise. Choreography for fighting scenes-wise was amazing. We had returning characters through the um, amazing help of trailers, such as Lady Deadpool, Sabretooth, and many more other characters that you learn find out into the trailers if you pay attention. Uh, we also have Charles Xavier's uh, twin sister, um, uh, Cara Nova, I think her name is Cara Nova, Cara Nova, Cara, Cara, whatever. The situation being that she is just like her brother, able to telekinetically, you know, read people's minds, but only through the aspect of being able to touch them. In which case, you know, is in the comic books, so you should already know that. Basically, finally get a rundown of her and her origin from the from the from the comic books, which fits perfectly. Um, we have some familiar faces, new faces, uh, references, and stuff like that through the entire film, which is amazing, both comic book and cinematic. Uh, let's see. Um, other stuff. Hugh Jackman still portraying the character of Logan very well, but in a more cin difference in a cinematic view. Uh, we also have the return of Daphne King. If you haven't seen the third trailer of Deadpool, she comes back as X-23. I will not say anything else besides that. Um, she does an amazing job with her character returning and everything like that. The references into Logan, uh, so that way it makes sense into this movie, along with the other movies besides that. Um, Origins, The Wolverine, Deadpool 1, Deadpool 2. You know, all those aspects of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Fox Universe, tends to finally click together as one giant canon universe, so that's amazing. Um, the TVA having much more bigger plot into the story than we think, along with a twisted reveal at the end. Um, and many, many, many innuendo jokes, dog pool, of course, and, um, yeah, there's just so much through this entire film, you'd have to watch it multiple times to understand the equivalence of what you're really missing out and what you're in for. Uh, the prop department did amazing with all the props that they've inquired onto this film, uh, nothing really else to say about that, uh, everything seemed pretty well done, especially within, like, you know, costume design, uh, the Deadpool's new costume is absolutely phenomenal. Looks very similar to what he had already done, worn before, but it's a little different. The belt buckle, I believe, is a little bit different. Uh, yeah, it actually it is. The symbol on the original belt was just a circle with a circle within a circle. And now this time, the buckle is the little face of Deadpool symbol, like we all know right here on my hat, uh, is finally making an appearance on the belt. Um, the swords are, for once, not just regular titanium steel. They are now animantium, from what I was gathering online sources from the trailer. Um... This, the, 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 the gloves handles on the top of the hands are gold trim now, and uh, this torso uh, design is a little more different. Before it was kind of all together red with a zipper going down it, but now it looks like it's just all one giant piece with a couple like spandex uh, Velcro type going thing going up here with the collarbone. Uh, really, really nice color shade for red for sure. Doesn't look too bright, doesn't look too uh, dark, but it's just right to where we kind of reference the original comic book version of uh, Deadpool, and I couldn't be more proud of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, as this movie goes on further and further, we start getting more emotionally indulged into the story, backstory of both Wade Wilson and Logan from this fact of their universes that they come from. Basically, as the movie just keeps going on, we find ourselves more in dived into the backstories of both Wade and Logan to very much present themselves as being much more bigger picture characters than they usually have been presenting themselves, Deadpool having more of a role in how this Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to expand into the X-Men universe, and the fact that the original story that we know about Logan is more than just what we know already, being his first inter interaction with the Weapon X pro project, um, escaping, 
um, making his own name for the Mex for the X-Men, going on his own journeys a couple times as we go into the Wolverine chapter, and Logan, of course, being his last debut as Wolverine, which was the most saddest moment for Marvel car for Marvel fans and um, comic book lovers alike. Um, but to find out that this movie has a very, very clever and very hilariously disrespectful way of bringing that back into the fold so that way it makes sense and doesn't exactly ruin the whole thing, but doesn't exactly point out the fact that, hey, sometimes you gotta break things to make good things out of things. So, um, just the fact that uh, I feel with this movie, the fourth wall breaking with Deadpool, as usual, is nothing but shy, but of course, perfect. I just wish there were a little bit more, just because I felt there was a little dry spot of them. But other than that, the jokes were perfect. The the improv with Ryan Reynolds for the character is just as amazing as ever. Hugh Jackman does an amazing job with making a version of Wolverine that seems more defeated and old and washed up or some form of just like depressed. In which case, you know, I feel ha I feel there's not enough of that in films nowadays. You know, we have these characters that we grew up with for a really long time. And then eventually they just kind of go to this defeatist mode, which I always feel is great because then they have that moment of redemption level, which I always am admired in a film. So the fact that we're finally getting that for Logan as well is amazing. So I could not be any more more impressed with how they managed to make this whole thing fit perfectly in the MCU, but still kind of keeping it in its own little world with the Fox Century universe. And the unfortunate fact of the matter is that this is officially the last Fox um, mentioning film that we're ever going to see in the Marvel Universe, Fox-wise. And that's a little sad, just because we've kind of come a long way since those movies, the original films being the original Fantastic Four, the original X-Men movies, um, let's see, uh, the original Elektra film, the original da Daredevil film, uh, the original Punishers, and stuff like that. Uh, we've come a long way from where we were before, with the more realistic-looking versions of them that didn't have exactly cop, you know, call back to the comics too much, versus the new versions of the characters that we have now, which are more comic accurate. They have more design accuracy to the comic characters. Um, it's just blowing my mind of how far we've come when it comes to making films. And I couldn't be more prouder to have grown up with such an amazing, uh, cinema, uh, amazing cinematic universe. Um, so, you know what? At the end of the day, I feel. What do I? What would I give this film out of ten? Uh, when I first saw the film, just how it started, I was as a fan, I was a little upset. But as I watched it the second time and the end credits for this film, um, I was more than inclined to be like, you know what? It definitely deserves a higher rating. This movie was the best movie I've seen since, not including Avengers movies, of course. But my favorite all-time scene movie since then was uh, the Winter Soldier. And then as it went on, I eventually figured out, like, my second favorite was um, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, and Shang-Chi. Uh, eventually, my, my chart changed to the fact that I eventually decided to rearrange all that. And I, now I am standing at Deadpool and Wolverine at number one. Uh, number two, I am standing with uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, number three, I'm going with Shang-Chi. And number four, I am going with... Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Actually, no, let's change that. We're going to go with number four, uh, Winter Soldier, and then after that, Multiverse of Madness. So, what do I give the score of Deadpool and Wolverine? I give that baby a solid 10 out of 10. So, awesome movie, amazing cast, amazing acting, amazing story, amazing just everything's blown away. I love the callbacks to the comics. I love the callbacks to the other movies, uh, previous movies. The jokes towards Phase 4 is amazing. Just overall, a really good film, very well done film, a fantastic film. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman bring their dynamic duo to the screen once again, and no shy of impressive, no shy of anything. Therefore, I dub the the best Marvel movie of the year. So maybe even of life, I don't have exactly an answer how much more I can say that I love this film so much. So. Yep, that's just my that's my review for the day. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know it's been a very long time since I made a, a movie review like this. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please go see Deadpool and Wolverine before it's out of theaters. I guarantee you, you will not find a better experience to watching that movie than you would finding it at a theater. Apparently, it's on a 4D experience, so I would definitely check that out if you have one of those near, near your home or whatever. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will be making the spoiler version of this video really soon, probably right after this. So thank you all for watching once again. I know I've said that maybe three or four times now. And I will see you all, hopefully, if we can continue this in the next video. Bye-bye. Who's next? Oh.
my God. Sabretooth, ready to die. Wait, 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 wait! Time! You look ridiculous. People have waited decades for this fight. It's not gonna be easy. Baby knife, you shoot the double, you take him down. Side control, then full mount, and you ground and pound till he makes no sound because he's dead. Shut the fuck up. Oh my God. Okay, good luck, I'm a huge fan. Rated R.